some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we have an American state national, aka a Sovtard, who makes a special appearance at a court and has something to say about the uh, conditions of the jails that she was put into, among other things. And be forewarned, uh, she's going to try to pull at your heartstrings much later in the video, so just be prepared for that. Don't fall for her tricks now. Uh, so let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. going to be in for a bit of a ride with this one so just hang in there because there's going to be a lot of word salad following this so just be forewarned and i cannot cross the bar if you if you i can't cross the bar you know that well yeah you're there anyway so you might as well get it over with and start uh defending yourself because of course you're going pro se anyway, and you will demonstrate that you believe that they have no jurisdiction over you anyway, which leads to the question, why are you even here? It's all no, about well, I can hear you. Can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. Right. It's not as sophisticated as my hearing aids, but I can hear you this time. All right. All right. I just want to be clear that when I was here for the arraignment, first off, I never had a first appearance. Um, Within 24 hours, I was incarcerated for 13 days without a first appearance. Bond was set. And that's true because you wouldn't sign the documents at the jail until you sign documents at the jail. You don't, uh, you don't. Get Where get is that appearance. written that you have to sign anything? Because I couldn't find it. It just simply says within 24 hours, I would go before a judge. I had well, to, I had uh, felony charges. You properly booked, so that's the way that was, but I'm not going to argue with that point, but go okay, ahead. Okay, well, I just want to get it on the record that I am here on a special appearance, and I'm just the authorized representative for this birth certificate. Oh, we feel so honored to have you in the courtroom going pro se and going to make yourself look like a complete moron by uh, parroting the Sovereign Citizen script and not having anything original to say about it. What would he frickin' do, Khaleesi? It has been federally authenticated, if you want to take a look at it. It has been certified by the state and federally authenticated. I hold, I am the owner of the SQQV. Do you understand what that means? Not a clue. Really? Okay. It means that I'm not in your jurisdiction. I stand on the land and soil. By your mere presence in this uh, courtroom, you have acknowledged that you, they do have jurisdiction over you. So don't give me that BS, because if, if you truly believe that they had no jurisdiction over you, you would give them the middle finger and not even walk in there. I'm under the public law, okay. and I have a right to pass through service. All right, so I take it you're representing yourself today? No, I am presenting myself. Okay. So you're not going to enter a plea today or work out negotiations or anything? I'm not making any plea whatsoever. I have not uh, consented to contract with this court in any way. Your consent is not exactly required for uh, crimes that you have committed to be tried. That is pretty much in the Constitution where uh, you are entitled to a speedy trial. It doesn't say anything about consent. Okay. I'm an American state national. I'm not a sovereign citizen. That was uh, a hate crime under which I was arrested, and the arresting officer has since quit his job with the Jasper Police Department. 
All right, well, say we can. Uh, I have a file here that I, uh, I have one prepared for both the prosecutor and for you, Judge, if you'd like to take a look and go along with me on, on what I'd like to bring before the court. My goal is that this case get dismissed with prejudice before I walk out today. I find it highly dubious that uh, the arresting officer somehow managed to quit so soon after uh, you were arrested. And now all of a sudden the uh, judge actually does have jurisdiction because you need him to dismiss the case? Uh, I'm sorry, it doesn't exactly work like that. You can't have your kick and eat it, too. Well, that's not going to happen, but we'll take a look at those files. Okay. They're the same one for each of you. We'll take them under review for you. Okay. Give me one. Give Miss Tiffany one. She can take back and look it over. All right, well, here's what we're going to do today. I'll look this over for you. I'll okay, look this, this over. This file is not completed. Let me explain. All the highlighted areas, I met with the uh, clerk of court, um, Greg Godwin, and uh, the areas that were in yellow here, um, I expected that he would be able to provide the information for me to complete these documents. Um, I am not able to mail them until I can get them completed. He suggested that I talk with, is it John Durham, or who is it, Durant? Am I getting that correct, Captain? That's Mr. Durant, the state attorney. Durant, Durant, okay. Mm -hmm. um, he suggested I should talk with him as far as getting this information completed. He said he wasn't able to complete the information, um, otherwise I can hire somebody to get this information for me. Um, so if this case is not going to be submitted, but the first letter in here is a fair notice and warning letter. And, uh, and it speaks to what the issues are here. Uh, first off, it was a false arrest because I do have a right to travel. No, and then also there is no contract. The application for a driver's license does not tell anybody that you are trading a God-given right for a privilege. There is no victim in this crime because I have enough, a right to face an accuser and uh, there's nobody here that was harmed. Deprivation of due process, Your Honor, you denied me a first appearance and I have not heard the charges because I, was, I am hard of hearing. I brought that to the attention of the court at the arraignment and uh, your comment was simply, I'm talking as loud as I can. Well, that doesn't do any good for somebody who has a disability and you have a responsibility to me under the Americans Disability Act. And so I have issues with that. So up until, I mean, I still haven't really heard the charges. You know, when it started out, I was slammed with seven felony charges. Uh, had a violation of my Fourth Amendment rights because they did a search and seizure of my vehicle. They tossed my car completely. He claimed he found a phone in my car. He didn't. He took it out of my hand after shoving my arm. That was assault and battery. And then when I got into the police vehicle, my keys were in my pocket. He took them out of my pocket. All right, that again is assault and battery and also could be considered rape. Okay, there's just so much to unpack right here. I mean, first of all, you were pulled over, which resulted in you being charged with a number of felonies, and you claimed there was no victim, so therefore, no crime. Uh, yeah, uh, that is a, uh, quite a logical fallacy right there, considering a traffic violation, which you most likely committed right there, since you're being charged with it, uh, is a crime, and there doesn't need to be a victim for it. It's just that you committed a violation. Then there's the uh, right to travel argument that you have. Uh, yeah, you do have the right to travel, but if you uh, interfere with the officer in any way during a traffic stop, then it can lead to your arrest. So my assumption here is that you didn't have a driver's license or anything like that that and ended up causing a real scene about it and ended up getting charged. So uh, you do know that Florida law requires you to have a driver's license, your vehicle registered, and to have a tag on it and everything like that. And the Tenth Amendment is what grants the states the rights to do that, you moron. I mean, there's just a, so much stupidity within this string of arguments that you had. I'm not going to be able to address this 
whole thing without turning this into an hour-long video. So let's just go ahead and continue on. Uh, Prosecutor Travis Munden did not act for eight days. He allowed me to sit in jail for eight days with felony charges hanging over my head, which you put a $38,000 bond on me without my participation. Again, that was a, a violation or a deprivation of due process. The felony charges were bogus. I'm an international notorial witness for the United States of America, unincorporated. I had those, uh, um, what were they, driver's license on my phone and birth certificates because I do remote notarization for people. I had a right to have that. I had it by permission of the people that sent it to me. Okay, so you claim to not be an American citizen, yet you want to claim all the rights and privileges of being a U.S. citizen. Uh, no, that's not exactly how that works. The uh, prosecutor, Dana Brady Giddens, she failed to, uh, to act for six days after, on July 1st, Travis transferred it from the felony side over to misdemeanors. She sat on it for six days. I sat in jail for 13 days, not even knowing what was going on. And, uh, and it wasn't until after I got out of jail and I called her and while I was on the phone, she goes, oh, here it is. She asked me what my name was and she goes, oh, here it is. And she opened it while I was on the phone. So Travis sat on it for seven days. Wh whatever happened to due process, don't they have a responsibility to act timely? Because I know I do, all right? Uh, I was kidnapped. I was kidnapped and taken to a prisoner of war camp. I had no choice in this, and I'm an American. I'm an American state citizen. I stand above this court. I stand above this for-profit corporation. Okay, a nice little string of delusional statements right there. I mean, no, you were not in a prisoner of war camp. You were in a prison because you committed a crime. And again, you are not exactly above the law. You are... Uh, subject to the law, just like everybody else in this country. Uh, first time that I saw you, sir, was 44 days after my arrest. And again, my I was my uh, Americans with Disability Act rights were violated in that you made no accommodation at all for my not being able to hear you. So as far as I know, I never did put in a plea. I have, I have not pled in any way whatsoever. I have not consented. I have signed absolutely nothing. I signed no citations. Hey, soft heart, do you want to hear a secret? Do you want to know why you haven't been able to enter a plea yet? Well, it's because you haven't yet. That's the secret. But you are at the phase right now where you're supposed to enter a plea. But you keep on with this word salad, and it's getting you nowhere fast. I, and I have had communication with Tabitha and Dana. I have been, we have been writing back and forth on our 72 rule of response, and, and, uh, and I can't get answers out of them. They keep telling, I ask for documentation, and all I get is no documents responsive. No documents responsive. Over and over again. I asked her for her oath of office on, on Florida letterhead, nothing. I get a scrap of paper. I asked her for a signed contract on my side, I get a citation that's not signed. The citation wasn't even signed by the arresting officer, it's by somebody else, and it has comments in it that says I said something, and I would appreciate eye contact, sir. Oh, looky here. We got an entitled Miss Pris Sovtard who wants to disrespect the judge in his own courtroom. Well, in any other circumstance, that could definitely lead to contempt of court and more jail time. And then there's the issue of those citations. They are not contracts, nor do they need contracts for them to be issued to you if you have committed an infraction. I don't appreciate being ignored by the court. So, uh, so anyway, I didn't sign anything. I have not contracted with this court. I haven't contracted at all. And why? Because I don't need to. I'm not under these statutes, rules, regulations, codes, ordinances, mandates, and all the rest. I tried to explain that to the uh, public defender here that you assigned to talk to me. And I, he basically, everything out of his mouth came out right out of this hate crime document called Law Enforcement Guide to Sovereign Citizens. I'm not a Moor. I'm not a, a Waukesha nation. I'm an American state citizen. Okay. To call somebody a sovereign citizen is slander. To put it in writing is libel. Sovereign is a king. 
somebody who is governing, self-governing. Citizen is somebody who works for another. It's an oxymoron. It's not even real. And yet law enforcement wants to act on that kind of foolishness. Even the public defender here believes in it. I'm a private living woman. My responsibility is to balance the accounts of the public, you know, the public all caps name and to keep the public charitable trust in balance. You know, Roosevelt put us on an all debit system and these credits have been stolen from the people. And all I'm trying to do is my responsibility here. So I'm asking, I'm planning to subrogate this. If you look at the second document or maybe you already have, and you've seen the list of people I will send it to. Um, Governor DeSantis has been involved in my case. I have a letter here that was sent to him. If you would like to see that, let's see. Maybe it's in one of the other files. Um, anyway, he has been involved in this as well because he is also part of the problem here and that he is not assisting the Americans within this state to be safe from the harm that is being caused by this system by the you know, law enforcement officers and deputies who are not educated as to who we are. I had sat down, I had noticed both the police chief and the sheriff on two different occasions, they have my fee schedule as to what I'll be charging when this is all over and I have to come back and, and have my, you know, my, my rights restored and my property restored. My car was towed from in front of the police station. That's where I was when all this happened. I was in talking to Chief Rickerson. I went in and talked with, I noticed both the chief, chief and the sheriff, the clerk of court, and the property appraiser when I got here back in March, that I was an American state citizen and I'm not a U.S. citizen. They were both noticed. They've both been noticed twice. And along with that was the fee schedule of what I charge when my rights are violated. Uh, yeah, you claim to be a American state national or something of that nature and not a sovereign citizen, but yet you have used just about every single sovereign citizen talking point that they use, including fee schedules, contracts, and a few other things. So if it uh, walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it must be a duck, and no amount of gaslighting out of your pie hole will change the fact that you are a soft tard who is trying to pull the wool over everybody's eyes. I was talking with the police chief for the fourth time. We have sat down and had four conversations on how we educate the officers to know the difference so people are not harmed on the side of the road. I wasn't even on the side of the road. I was parked in front of the police station when all this went down. I wasn't even in my car. This officer got in my face back in April and he stood there. Okay, I was meeting with the police chief, Chief Rickerson. At that time, he was an inter interim police chief. And this officer barged into our discussion and got in my face and started spitting on me with his saliva. He was like this close to me, yelling at me, telling me, I'm a police officer for 25 years and I've dealt with plenty of people like you. And he went on and on and on, okay? No, he hasn't dealt with anybody like me because I know my rights. And I, I've studied this. Why? Because you could not get through the 2020 election and not know that there's something seriously wrong with this country. And I have seen this coming for many, many years. I've studied it with my husband. My husband passed back in 2010. In July of 2016, I read an article that the Pope had relinquished our social security accounts to the US Treasury, and I knew something had changed, something was up, and I went looking. And when I went looking, I found at least 20 organizations trying to help people come out of slavery, come out of this US citizen slavery. You're, you're a slave to the British crown, to the, which is the administrative arm, to the Pope, which is the financial arm, and to Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia, which is the military arm of the, of the one world government. Well, I don't go with that because I serve a king. I serve the almighty king. That is who I am. I am a child of the king. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm a child of the king and I have rights that were given to me, sovereign rights given to me by my creator. And I live by the Bible. I don't live by any kind of religion, sir. I read the Bible cover to cover and I do what it says. And when it says that there are two commandments in the New Testament that Jesus or Yeshua, I prefer to call him by his Hebrew name, <coughs> the two commandments to love God above all things and to love your neighbor as yourself, I live by that. But that's a summary of the Ten Commandments that are in the Old Testament, Exodus 20. 
And the first five commandments are how you love your creator. And the second five commandments is how you love your neighbor. And I live by that, sir. And this officer had to break several of those commandments to put me into this system. He had to lie, and he had to steal my property. And if this is the system that this government or this for-profit corporation is, is trying to force on the people, then you guys should all be ashamed of yourself. I am asking, I know I'm not asking, I am demanding. See, a sovereign does not motion the court. A sovereign demands. I am demanding that this case be dismissed with prejudice. Wait a second. Let's go ahead and reverse that and play it again because I think uh, she might have goofed up right here. <laughs> I am asking, I know I'm not asking, I am demanding, see a sovereign does not motion the court, a sovereign demands, I am demanding that this case be dismissed with prejudice. Yeah, she definitely goofed up. She, in her impassioned speech right here, she forgot her script and ended up admitting that she is a sovereign citizen. That is ridiculously Stupid. You see, kiddies, this is why you should have a lawyer to advise you when you're in this kind of situation. But she ended up screwing up right here. But I don't know if the judge called it or not, so let's continue on. Because I'm going down for the count. I'll take whatever punishment you give me. And I think my 13 in days in jail without signing anything, just for comfort, should give you an idea of the fact that I don't... I finish when I start. I went into that jail, Your Honor, I had quite a surprise. I wasn't prepared for it. If it hadn't been that I took a couple in who were homeless, I probably would have ended up going home to a dead dog in a house full of crap. But that gentleman, the people that I took in who were homeless called my girlfriend and said she didn't come home last night. Well, my girlfriend knew that I was on my way to the post office in, the, in Live Oak and she knew I was going to stop by and talk to the sheriff. So first call she made was to the Swanee County Jail. Second call was to the Hamilton County Jail, and she found me. I was sitting in jail. I was, uh, I've was i never been in trouble with the law before. Do you know what it's like for a 73-year-old woman to have to stand there and take her underwear off and stand in front of somebody else? That was so humiliating. You want to talk about rights? Let's just talk about basic humanity here. And I was given an orange so I'm saying, I don't look good in orange at all. I have to tell, bring some humor so I can stop crying. I wore that jumpsuit in my underwear for 13 straight days because I wouldn't sign your paperwork because I would not come in contract with this corporation. This for-profit corporation, you're not a government, let's not, let's be honest. Because I wouldn't come in contract with you, I suffered extremely. I was, three days in a row, I asked for a sweatshirt, I was freezing, you got a swamp cooler in that jail. It's loud, and it's cold, and every car was wearing a jacket, and every inmate had a sweatshirt except for me. Three days, I asked for a sweatshirt. On the fourth day, when I asked the guard, said, you don't sign up paperwork, you don't get nothing. Yeah, that's real sweet. There's a camera right above the toilet. Yeah, that's real sweet. You're sleeping on a steel bed. When, they, when I went and signed your paperwork, they gave me a mattress where the fabric was touching fabric. I have a nine-inch spread thumb to little finger. And I can tell you that the padding of that mattress lay within a lump. 12 inches by 30 inches. The very first day in holding, I had a, a bruise on my tailbone sitting on a steel bed. Hey, soft heart, I hate to be the one that breaks your uh, little fancy world of jail being this perfect little place where you can have fun. But no, it's not. It is not exactly that. It is a place where you go to be punished for your crimes. It is not supposed to be a pleasant experience. It is a jail. You know, I'm used to a mattress and I have a memory foam topper on top of it. I like it sweet. 
I went without drinking water for 13 days. I drink on average almost a gallon a day. My dog and I consume a gallon a day. You get coffee in the morning, you get Kool-Aid for lunch and dinner, and you get absolutely no water. And the only water coming out of the faucet in the bathroom is hot water. Okay, this is inhumane. I was tortured from my faith. Why would I say that? Because I, according to Revelation 18.4, it says, come out of her, my people. I am one of his people. And, if, and that Revelation 18 is all about Babylon. And yes, I did the paperwork to come out of this Babylonian system. Matthew 6.24 says, I can't serve two masters. Well, who gets the taxes? Who gets the first tithe? The government grabs it right out of your paycheck. You don't have a choice. Steals it right from God. We don't get to give God our first fruits. I don't know what your faith is, but that's my faith. I serve the mighty creator. It was very boring in there. And they had some books. And I was reading, on average, 400-page novels every single day. But on the fifth day, the guards came in and took all the books out. So I had nothing I could read. And then the girls gave me some paper. I had three sheets of paper. I started writing and writing and writing, front and back, as small as I could. And when I ran out of those three sheets of paper, the girls in the cell on the other side started giving me paper. Why? Because I befriended them. We talked about our Savior. We talked about why we were there. I wasn't preaching. I don't preach. But I shared with them that, you know, they got themselves in trouble. And the first thing they need to do is straighten out their lives and get right with their creator. Because if they can do that, the rest will fall in place. And that's what I spent those 13 days doing. Trying to be a big sis or a mom to those other girls who have lost their way along the way. Five of the girls in that prison or jail committed, recommitted their lives to God while I was there. And I, I'm, I'm very happy for him, and I continue to pray for him. I want you to know, sir, that I pray for you also. I pray for every one of you, because I pray that the Father will take the veil off your eyes so you can see what's really going on here. I don't know what you know. I have no idea what you know, but I know exactly how it works, and I know about the security bond, and I know how you have hit my SUQB trust. And that's what this subrogation is of that bond. Because I'll be filling out the, all the IRS forms. If this case is not dismissed with prejudice today, or I'll give you three days, as it says in the document. If it's not dismissed with prejudice, then what I plan to do is fill out these IRS forms and make sure that the account that I am responsible for, I, the private woman, is responsible for the accounting of the public woman, or the all caps name, that you all have fraudulently created. And I mean, when I say you all take it professionally, <laughs> you obviously weren't there when I was born. But anyway, the point is, sir, that I do feel the responsibility now that I understand how all of this works, that I, it's my job to apply those credits to the debits. It's my job to make sure that those funds are not taken multiple times or above and beyond what's necessary. And so that's what this subrogation document is all about. I want you to pay attention, sir, to the list on this document of the people that the distribution list. You see, I have notified the state's attorney. I came out of the system back in April of 2018. And when I moved to Hamilton, I was in Jacksonville at the time. When I moved to Hamilton, I redid my paperwork. So on the public record in this county, I have two filings with all my paperwork showing that I am an American. I'm not a U.S. citizen. I have a, an act of expatriation, I have a deed of reconveyance, I have a cancellation of all power of attorney, I have an assumed names that gives me a copyright and a registration on all of my names. Well, I hope you enjoyed her attempts to pull at your heartstrings. I mean, it was rough to get through considering that uh, all she had to do was enter a plea of guilty or not guilty and uh, the uh, process would have moved forward. The judge was just too nice and let her talk, though. Anyway, let's continue on. Okay, you can't Chair. make money on my names. And when, if you'll notice on this list here, yeah. the state's attorney is, or the, I'm sorry, the state's attorney, the attorney general, were all notified back in 2018 on American. Why they didn't notify y'all, I don't know. But why I'm being persecuted, I don't appreciate. Okay. On this list here, because you have deprived me of my rights, I've also included the Judicial Qualification Commission as well as others. So, I yield. Okay. Well, I appreciate your commenting. So, what we'll do is, uh, all I'm going to do right now is 
continue to outdoor rate things to see what's I can't do that, sir. I'm be, I will be at the Feast of Tabernacles from the 1st of Tishri, which is uh, September 26th until, um, let me think, what is it, 9 plus 8, 18, around the 20th of October is the Feast of, Ta of uh, Sukkot, uh -huh. Feast of Tabernacles. I'll be out of town for that, celebrating what with about, about 300 no believers. What about November 15th? Well, I mean, not, I don't plan to attend any more trials here. This is my last one. Okay. I'm hoping that you will do the right thing here and that the state's attorney will do that tapathy here. She has not proven jurisdiction. Once I, once okay, I uh, this not consent, it your is her is, job to prove jurisdiction. Your case is continued to November 15th. We're going to take everything you said under consideration. Okay. I'll look at your papers. State attorney will look at them. And, uh, on November 4, November 15th, we'll come to some conclusion. I that. hope to get a letter from you. I will continue to get the information here. If is it Direct? Did you say, Mr. Direct? I will. Uh, I'll. See, I'll get in touch with him. Um, Greg was telling me, and I know Greg personally. Greg was telling me that uh, all he does is provide you with a uh, with a court case number. Somebody is creating a security on this. That's who I need to talk to. So if you know or you can find out uh, those highlighted areas in these documents, as soon as I can get that information and fill it in, then the formal documents will be sent. I hope to hear from you before that, Tabitha. Ma'am, I do not know who creates the security. Okay, Ms. Lucier, I appreciate your comments and everything, and uh, have a good wherever you're going in October. Where that is. Feast of Tabernacles, it's yeah, in Leviticus feast. 23. Um, okay. I'd also like to mention, if you have any influence at all with the sheriff, ask them to go into that jail and find out what's really going on. It's deplorable. Okay. It's a disgrace. I'll mention it to him. Thank you. I will. All right. Well, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. All right. Well, now this soft heart just had so many contradictions and so many things that were just so wrong. I mean, first of all, she claimed that she was not a sovereign citizen and then turned around and told, pretty much spilled the beans that she was one later on in her uh, little speech that she had. And then she goes on to say that she doesn't preach, but she spent at least 10 minutes standing there preaching. I mean, just so full of contradictions. Well, at any rate, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one.